do it again. Back to Trey Wingo in Tampa. In 2007, it was Cleveland. In 2008, it was Tampa. The cities have changed, but the end result has not. Rocky Top on top one more time. Welcome into Sports Center's coverage of the NCAA Championship game. Trey Wingo here along with Carol Lawson and Stacey Dales. The evening started with two simple plans. Stanford trying to win their first national championship in 16 years. Tennessee going for an unprecedented eighth national championship. And they were up to the challenge early. There was Candace Wiggins, the inspiration for her Cardinal team. And there was Candace Parker getting ready. First half game tied at seven off the pass. Shannon Bobbitt, they call her a little bit. She brought a lot in this game of three. Lady Ball's up by three. Still up by three. Pressure defense really controlled this game off the turnover. Give it back to Candace. You bet. Lady Ball's up by 12. Very next play. Once again, Nikki Anasicki causing the turnovers and the pressure. And it can't go anywhere else. And then the same score now. Another one in the lane for Candace Parker. Tennessee up by seven. Stanford down eight here. And Jane Appel trying to get things going. Pulls within six. Stanford down ten at this point. Candace Wiggins under pressure. She gets called for the five-second violation. Stanford down ten. Wiggins drives, gets the lay, and that made it 27-19. Same score. They kick it out to Bobbitt. Same place. If they ain't gonna defend it, we'll do it all night long. She had three. Stanford down nine. Wiggins gets loose and buries the three. The Cardinal within six. Under a minute to play in the half. Nikki Anasicki all alone. Yes! One of three Lady Balls in double digits. Tennessee by 10. Second half now. Tennessee up 41-33. Kayla Peterson inbounds and it's stolen by Parker. And Parker finishes. She shot 50% from the floor. Still in the second half. Parker and one. Shoulder problem? What shoulder problem? Tennessee up 11. And then Vicky Ball driving the lane. Hits it and goes down but would leave the game with a knee brain, but not without some words of encouragement for the rest of her Lady Balls still trying to fight their way to a second national championship. Tennessee up 56-44. Parker, why not? What a way to go out. They go up 58-44 to and hugs and happy times for the Tennessee Lady Balls. Candace Parker ends without a failure. She said anything less than winning another national championship, the season would be considered a failure. No failure for her. Tennessee wins 64-48. to They held that Stanford offense, which had been cranking out points. 90 a game over their last two to under 50. They got balanced scoring, and they've got another national championship in Knoxville. It was all worth it to win an eighth national champion. We we had a lot of critics at the, throughout the year, and we just shut them up. How did your teammates set the tempo in the first half with their brilliant defense? Well, you know what? Um, we challenged ourselves. We heard that we couldn't hold them under 50, and so we set out as, that as our goal. We knew we were going to score a lot better than we did in the LSU game, and that's what we did. I, I like the fact that most of the people picked Stanford because I think that really motivated our basketball team. And... Um, you know, I told them, I told them we might, we might go in as the underdog, but we're going to come out as the top dog, and they are, they're top dogs. So Tennessee now joins this elite list, this Lady Vols team, only the fourth to repeat, and the Lady Ball program, as you can see, has done it twice. The other teams to repeat, UConn, who strung together three in a row, and USC in 83 and 84. You know, it was really impressive when you consider, Stacy, how well this Stanford offense was moving along. 25 turnovers for Stanford, the most in a game since February of 2003. This game literally lived up to the cliche, defense wins championships. No question about it, Trey. And for those of you that understand the triangle offense, if you look at what uh, the Lakers did, if you look at what the Bulls did with Phil Jackson, that's the triangle offense. They've been doing it to perfection. Well, Tennessee's mission was to take that away. They did 
did it with full court pressure. They did it with the 2 2 1. They jumped into a 1 2 1 1. They did it with a 1 2 2. And eventually they wore the shot clock down. Stanford could never simulate into any kind of offensive rhythm. A team that has scored in the past two games 180 points. They took away everything that Stanford did, really broke the rhythm and delayed them. Yeah, they did. The defense of Tennessee was amazing tonight. But on the offensive end, we talked about before the game, other players had to step up for Tennessee and give them a scoring jolt. Shannon Bobbitt, the point guard, opened this game and set the tone for those supplementary players on the attack. She hunted for her shots at the three-point line. She had three threes in the first half. She was aggressive off the dribble. She set the tone in getting this team into an aggressive mindset on the offensive end. Her double-figure output in the first half and Nikki Anasicki's double-figure output in the first half, that was the difference in giving this team confidence on the offensive end. They certainly look much more fluid offensively. And then we have to talk about Candace Parker. She now has two national championships, one coming with a dislocated left shoulder. Mm -hmm. In the pantheon of great players in women's college basketball, where is she? I think she's up there. I mean, I think she's in the conversation of greatest ever. You talk about a player that only used three years of college eligibility, and she has two championships. One of those championships, she won with a one shoulder, with a right shoulder safety. So I think she's up there with Diana Taurasi. I think she's up there with Holtzclaw, Cheryl Miller. She's in that select group of three or four players. I agree, Kara. She's in my top three, my top four. You just mentioned a couple of them. Candace Parker, great resolve, resilience to complete and get her team together. That was the thing that impressed me. She united this group in times of despair. And I throw in there with Cheryl Miller, who won two championships at USC. Shamika Holtzclaw, and of course, Diana Taurasi. Well, I tell you what, many times this season, she has had to carry this team on her shoulders. When her shoulders were not up to the task, mm -hmm. they carried her as well. 2008 is an election year. Uh, all the votes are in. It's a mandate. We're staying with the Lady Balls as the national champions for a second straight year. Let's send it back to SportsCenter.